Hey guys, we're going to be talking about complex numbers today. Uh, we've seen when solving quadratic equations we can get zeros, but complex numbers arise really when you have a parabola that doesn't cross the x-axis. So there appears to be no solution. So what we're going to talk about today is complex numbers and actually how to deal with a quadratic that does not have uh, real solutions all the time. But we're going to study complex numbers, figure out what they are, and, and it'll help us later on address those parabolas that don't cross the x-axis. And um, so a complex number, a couple things we need to consider or really think about. The, the big important rules here is that i squared is equal to negative 1, and that means i is equal to square root negative 1. And so the imaginary unit is the complex number whose square is negative 1. Um, we'll get rid of that is negative 1. So um, these are the two important things. We're going to be talking about this idea of complex numbers. This is a new number set. It's actually larger than the real numbers. Uh, but we're going to be talking about complex numbers today and actually three types of numbers that are complex. So it's important to know that every quadratic equation has a complex number solution, whether it's um, imaginary, whether it's just complex, or if it's even a pure imaginary solution. And we'll look at those in a second. So what does a complex number look, look like? Well, the form is a plus bi, and a and b are real numbers, okay? bi is what we would call the imaginary part, okay? If b is 0, then a plus bi is a real number. For example, if we had 5 plus 0i, that's still a real number. And that is why the complex numbers is the largest set, because you can take any real number and add 0i to it, and you've got a complex number. So it's important to remember, if b is 0, this imaginary part doesn't really exist, so it's still a real number. If a is 0 and b doesn't equal 0, then we have a plus bi is a pure imaginary number. So for example, 5i, 7i, negative 16i, those are pure imaginary numbers because they have no real part. a is the real part, bi is the imaginary part. So if b is 0, you have a real number. If a is 0 and b is not, you have a pure imaginary number. So let's look at this number set. So we have in the background here the complex number system in dark. And there's three types of complex numbers. There's reals, okay, a plus 0i, anything in that form, 5 plus 0i, negative 6 plus 0i. Those are real numbers. They're still complex, but they're real. You also have what's called the imaginary number. The imaginary number is when b doesn't equal 0. So you have an a and you have a b. So those are numbers like 5 plus 3i, negative 2 plus 7i. Those are imaginary numbers. So when b doesn't equal 0, you have an imaginary number. Okay. Uh, pure imaginary numbers are if your a value is 0. Okay, and that's just in the form of 0 plus bi. So there's complex numbers are in the form of a plus bi, and we really look at three, three types. They still can be real, they can be imaginary, and they can be pure. One other thing we need to talk about when we plot a uh, complex number, um, the plane changes, the coordinate plane changes. Uh, the real part is the x-axis, so the x-axis is now the a-axis. Your imaginary part is the y-axis now, so the y-axis becomes imaginary. So instead of going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it would be 1i, 2i, 3i, 4i, 5i, and so on. So let's look at what 3 plus 2i would look like. Basically, this is your x, this is your y, so if it's 3 plus 2i, you'd go 1, 2, 3 over, and 1, 2i up, and there's the point 3 plus 2i. So not much has changed. The, the order pair for uh, a complex number is not x comma y. It's in the, still in the form of a plus bi. Think of your a value as being x, and think of your y value as being that b part. Okay. So again, 3 over, 2 up is how we would plot that. The other thing we could talk about is the distance we have from here to here, the origin from that point. Okay, distance is absolute value, so we need to talk about how we take the absolute value of a complex number. So again, absolute value is the distance we are from the origin, 
So the form is if you have a complex number, a plus bi, that's going to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that's it. For example, if we used 3 minus 2i, that was our complex number. Now this complex number here would be imaginary because you have a that's not 0 and you have a b value that's not 0. This is imaginary. So let's take the absolute value would be 3 squared plus 2 squared. So it doesn't matter if this is minus or plus here because you're squaring both those values. So regardless, you're going to have a positive number. So the square root of 9 plus 4, you can't square root these individually. You have to add them so you get the square root of 13. So 3, 1, 2, 3 minus 2i would be right here. So the distance from my finger, to my left hand to my right finger here would be the square root of 13. So distance is always going to be real. We're not going to have an imaginary distance. Now, the other thing we can do is we can add or subtract and multiply this complex number. So again, if you're adding, it's the, simple, it's the same thing as combining like terms. So you have the complex number 4 minus 3i plus negative 4 plus 3i. These are complex, but since a and b are not zero, these are imaginary numbers. So you just combine like terms, 4 plus negative 4 plus negative 3i plus 3i, you actually get zero. Okay? And so we combine like terms. In number two, you have to be very careful if you're subtracting two complex numbers. Step number one is to distribute the negative sign. So that's what I've done here. 5 minus 3i comes down. Minus a negative 2 becomes plus. Minus a positive number, or the opposite of a positive number is minus. So we've done that. We distribute the negative sign first. Then you combine like terms like you did in part A. So we combine like terms, here's my real parts, 5 and 2, and my imaginary parts go together right here, and I get 7 minus 7i. So it's important when you add or subtract complex numbers, in this case if they're imaginary, you take the real parts together and then you add the imaginary parts together. Here's my real parts, imaginary, real parts, and imaginary parts. And don't forget if you're subtracting, distribute the minus sign first. Now, two examples where we multiply, it's really the same thing as when we're working with polynomials, okay? So treat them like you're multiplying polynomials. You've got to be really careful, though, in this case, because if we have multiplying with uh, an imaginary part, we're going to get this i squared. So let's look and be careful when we multiply or divide here of that i squared. So here in A, we have 3i times the quantity negative 5 plus 2i. So this is what we call a pure imaginary number. This is just imaginary. So distribute that 3i. So you have 3i times negative 5, which is negative 15i. And we have 3i times 2i, which is 6i squared. And that's where we have to be careful. Plus 6i squared, i squared is negative 1. So that 6i squared becomes negative 6. So this is our final result. So that's what we mean by be careful when you see that i squared. It's going to change the sign of your number. In part b, we're actually multiplying two binomials, these two imaginary numbers. So you've got options. You can use FOIL. You can use box method. You can just distribute. I've chosen to do box method. So one imaginary number here, one here, and we take the area of each box. Four times negative one. There's your negative four. Negative 1 times 3i is minus 3i. Negative 2i times 4 is negative 8i. And negative 2i times 3i. And again, negative 6i squared. So I put i squared in red because i got to be careful. Combine like terms. I circled my like terms. So you bring negative 4 down. Negative 3i uh, plus negative 8i is negative 11i. And that minus 6i squared becomes positive 6 because after all i squared is negative 1 and negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6 and I get 2 minus 11i. Okay so that's multiplying uh, these complex numbers again so make sure you watch out for i squared when you see it when you have two imaginary numbers binomials you're multiplying think of FOIL or your box method FOIL is just distributive uh, box method works for any number of terms
Um, but you know, when we talk about these um, complex numbers, most of the time they're going to be a well, binomial. They're going to be two terms because you're going to have a real and imaginary part. Okay, so let's look at dividing, or when we find the quotient. And when you're taking quotients, uh, you need to think of complex conjugates. Now, conjugates are really just the opposite sign of the, the, the binomial. So what I mean here is, if we have a plus bi, the conjugate would be a minus bi. So they look exactly the same, the only difference is the sign. Those are conjugates. Now, it just so happens when you multiply complex conjugates out, you get a squared plus b squared. And the idea here is if you multiply these two terms, you get negative bi squared, which would be b squared. So when you have the conjugates pattern right there, think of a squared plus b squared. And that's going to happen when we find, when we deal with quotients. So in the last example, let's find the quotient of this 2 plus 3i over 1 minus 4i. Now, we don't like radicals in the denominator and we don't like imaginary numbers in the denominator. So the only way to get rid of an imaginary number in that denominator is multiply everything by the conjugate. 1 minus 4i, the conjugate of that is 1 plus 4i. So I multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus 4i. I can FOIL or use the box method and multiply straight across when I do that. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4i is 8i, 3 times i is 3i, and 3i times 4i squared is 12i squared. The denominator, remember, it just square this number and square b, and we're good, because these are conjugates. So 1 squared plus 4 squared is 1 plus 16, which is 17. In the numerator, you combine your like terms, so 12i squared is minus 12, right? Because i squared is negative 1. 2 minus 12 is negative 10. 8i and 3i make 11i. Okay? So we've talked about complex numbers, how to add them, subtract them, multiply, and even find quotients. We can plot them. So when we start solving quadratics or getting more into solving quadratics, you're going to find a time where you're going to maybe use the quadratic formula and, and get a negative under the square root. Well, we're going to talk about how to simplify that and how to, to, to factor that out and factor out a negative i squared uh, later on. But this is just an introduction to complex numbers and we'll see them later on when we solve quadratic equations. So uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, make comments below or email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.